Hey guys, Rob with Next Gen Writer here. Today we're going to do an overview of the Chiggy UI of the Chiggy AIO6 LTE device. So I've just powered it on. We're going to see the Chiggy splash screen and it's going to boot up. You hear the tone. And it'll make the CarPlay connection and we'll see this toggle here. There's the Bluetooth going blue and then now we have CarPlay. So we'll exit out of there. Now I gotta tell you, I hate this screen. Uh, to me with these gradients that they've done and all the white in the background, it just makes it blurry and really hard for me to see. I, I just don't like it, I hate it. Um, I thought initially it was kind of a display issue, but it's not. It's, it's just this the way they've designed the background. Uh, hopefully, I don't know if you guys agree, if we give them some feedback, I don't know, maybe it'll change, but I hate it. So here's the home screen. You're going to see your speed in the middle, and then you're going to see your trip total with the reset button. You press that and hold it, and it'll reset. Uh, it's identified as the home page. You press the down arrow and it's going to hide those buttons and then give you trip data on the bottom. Uh, on the left, you're going to have your two TPMS sensors. Pressing either one of those is going to take you to the same place. And this is where you're going to set your values for front and rear, the units, PSI, or, uh, okay, bar and PSI, Fahrenheit and Celsius. Those are toggles. And then there's your bind button right there. Pretty straightforward, like most other motorcycle car, car display devices. All right, over on the right, you have widgets. And this one just populated. So let's see, uh, haven't got data yet. It's been giving me Shenzhen data. Uh, but I think that's because I'm in a block wall office and the GPS is not active, so it doesn't know where I am. Uh, also, right now, it doesn't seem to have any LTE connectivity. Uh, that's not the fault of the Chiggy. That's, um, this is Globe Network here, at least Chiggy uh, provisioned the Internet of Things service through Globe, and it kind of comes and goes. That's just... Uh, we have two networks here in the Philippines, one's smart, one's globe, and that's why dual SIM phones are very popular here because, okay, there we go. Now we picked up uh, LTE signal, and let's see if our widget updates. I've had this on before and gotten data. So that could be, I don't know if it pulls this through the phone or through the LTE service, but it, it's worked in the past for whatever reason. It could be my phone signaling is poor, um, but haven't hasn't updated yet. Okay, and then, uh, but what you have here is you have a sunset on one panel of the widget, then you have the uh, forecast or current temperature there it goes 32 degrees and cloudy and this is probably going to be in Shenzhen yeah it's still showing Shenzhen and I'm hoping that updates after I get it on the GPS uh, okay now we'll go back down here you have elevation and then your compass and bearing uh, or your bearing compass indicator with the bearing uh, that takes care of most of the main display. Over here, you'll see we have a CarPlay connection, as I stated, and this button here, which looks exactly the same, takes you to CarPlay or Android Auto. We'll exit out of there. That works just pretty much like any smart motorcycle driving system. The next button is the camera button, so it's going to take you into the cameras. Uh, right now it's showing the back camera. You can simply press the display and it'll toggle to front and with a, a small view of the rear you can toggle those and switch front and back as the main and then you can toggle again and just get the single cameras. Uh, down here you have the menu. You can turn off. You see the recording LED here. It defaults to start recording when the unit is powered on. 
and you can stop the recording here so it tells you recording is stopped you can take a picture and lock it and then here this also this is just another camera toggle that's what this is to lock video so we'll turn on recording to lock video you would use the lock button here and now we've locked video the folder is going to take you into it's going to stop recording and take you into where you can browse uh, previously recorded video so you'll see um, you can select by front back then you have pages and you can choose your locked videos here and then the, here are the pictures that you've saved so pretty straightforward for local access on the device of pictures and or video so we'll back out of there next is your telemetry data this is going to come from the GPS you have a speed it looks very similar to the home panel um, but you're going to have your speed in kind of a graph or a bar here compass and bearing uh, numerical speed um, tire pressure up here your voltage and then your trip information how long you've been driving and then also the lean angle is here so you can see your lean angle so that's your telemetry page and then lastly you have settings so we'll go into settings you have display and volume so you can control the uh, brightness of the display this is a 2000 nit display and then you can control the volume you can turn touch tones off for I had them off so it's not making tones as you're making selections and then you can also turn off the startup sound which I think I'll do and that's it for this page uh, storage here's where you can format your SD card or the local storage on the device so you have I think it looks like 28 gig here and there's selections here so you make sure you select the right one before you format so if you want to format your SD card you select the lower one and then you can perform a format then there's features list so here you can set your time I'm UTC plus 8 here in the Philippines you can I think this toggles the 24 hour I'm sorry sunrise and sunset uh, 24 hour format is underneath that and then it will do an auto time correction via GPS or phone connection so we'll back out of that uh, this TPMS selection takes you to the same place as if you went from the uh, home panel there's a headset which is just basically an informational page people that are interested in connecting their headset it's going to tell you to connect it directly to your mobile phone remote controller if you have the uh, wireless remote you can pair it here and see its connection status I did not order the remote controller GPS if I had this out on the bike and we had visibility to GPS we would see the number of satellites here uh, the speed that we're moving and our lat long also tells you on EPO valid next is OBD so if we were going to use an OBD module from Chiggy we would pair that here then attitude calibration so you can see this is the uh, tilt sensor so if you had a slight you know for some reason this was slightly uh, tilted the way you mounted it maybe you had it over on just above your uh, left hand grip for some reason then you could do a calibration and get that back to zero so your data would be accurate for tilt then lastly blind spot detection here you can toggle it on or off when it's on you pick up the options to turn on the voice alarm or not uh, turn on the calibration lines in the camera or not uh, select a standard or high sensitivity and then um, set your speed for when you want it active uh, 20 30 50 or 0 kilometers and then also you'll control the camera switching here 
So when you get an alert, whether it, uh, it defaults and switches to the rear camera automatically. Lastly, we have the action camera control. I've done a, a, another preliminary video on this. Uh, you would pair your camera here, so you select camera pairing, and then you'll select GoPro or Insta360. I tested this with an Ace Pro. I think my um, 360 camera, I think it's an X3, is a little too old. It would not connect. My GoPro is also a Hero 7. It would not connect. So later generation cameras from the GoPro and Insta360 family, you would make the choice and then connect the camera. Check my other video for more details on that. And that's it for features. So now download. This is where you will connect your phone with, through the Chiggy Go app to do Wi-Fi download of the video. I am not able to get this working yet. I've done a support inquiry to Chiggy. I've done a video that kind of shows my issue. I've tried as much troubleshooting as I can. I'm not able to make this connection. And also, I am unable, the next one here, well, there's tutorial and then up, update. So update is your firmware update. So it'll do the check. It'll see that my firmware is current, or it should, it did before. Okay, uh, it may not because I'm in CarPlay. I think normally it throws up a window says you have the latest version, but it did not do that. Um, and then this link over here to the next uh, will take you to a beta update. And that's where you're going to pick up like fusion mode or some of these new features that Chiggy's coming out with. Uh, again, I was not able to get that working on this device. So I think something's up with the Wi-Fi connectivity um, and, and we'll have to see how we get that resolved. Uh, so prior to that, you have tutorials. So these are just a lot of informational screens that tell you about various features built in, uh, the, the tutorials are built into the device. Um, there's, let's see. Oh, we're still in tutorials. We'll back out. And then you have your language selection screen. I have English chosen. Then you can do a reset here, reset the device. I may give this a try and then try to do the uh, connectivity again. And then you have an about screen. This has your barcode that you're actually going to need to uh, scan when you connect your device to the Chiggy Go app. And then it tells you a little bit about your device, your firmware version, the model etc serial number and then more lastly a few more settings here so if you want to toggle between uh, kilometers and miles per hour you can do that here uh, between Celsius and Fahrenheit you can do that here uh, there's a rest reminder I haven't seen it yet I've seen the guys talking about it on the AIO5 I don't know if it tells you to drink some coffee or what but if you've been on the bike for a while it'll give you a rest reminder and then there's another option here to turn the camera switching on or off. So there you have it. That's a quick overview of, of Chiggy's UI. And uh, really, I, I, I like it. I, I think it's done well. I have two complaints. Um, one, this gradient crap on the home panel, is, is I, I hate it. I, I just absolutely hate it. And two, I think they should put the action camera record stop start button when you have a uh, connected camera on the home panel. Uh, those are my two complaints at this point. Let's talk about the top buttons real quick. So you have four buttons along the top of the device. Let's go through how they work. So, um, okay, we just went to CarPlay. So if we press the first button here, it's going to take us to the home panel. Okay, the second button will take us to CarPlay. And for, what, regardless of wherever you are in the system, that's, these two buttons are navigation buttons that are going to take you to these two places. 
all right then the third button will take you to cameras so I have full view of the back camera that's probably what would make sense if you wanted to uh, uh, quickly look at cameras that's probably in for the video that you're in interested in but this is the camera um, configuration page it's not just a camera view so you you can actually config it's taking you to that configuration and control page and then you press it and it's going to toggle through from front to back so to get out of here you're going to want to use one of these other buttons and either go to carplay or panel home the last button turns your display on and off so I don't know this may become important because this this unit these heat sinks back here on the back get super hot I mean just you can't touch them this unit generates a lot of heat um, I knew that because when I went to Shenzhen and visited Alien Rider they demoed the AO, AIO5 and compared it to their system the AOI5 Five was a very very hot unit the alien rider just runs cool as a cucumber um, but now owning the AIO 6 it is just wicked hot uh, especially let's uh, let's see where the okay I don't yeah I have uh, brightness at about mid-range if you crank up this brightness it only generates more heat this thing is just super hot so to be honest I'm a little concerned uh, I wonder how this thing is going to perform I'm here in the Philippines I mean we get 38 39 40 degrees C here and uh, you know I'm running the unit here in the office at you know 26 C right now and uh, you know we'll see how it goes I'm gonna put it on the bike and give it a try but this thing runs hot absolutely so check it out. All right, got some comments on my posts. We'll see uh, see what they say. All right, thanks for watching, guys.